Now the block is green. Now the block is red again. Now the block is green. Now the block is red again. Now the block is green. Hello, I'm James Ingram. This video was digitized from a 1992 videotape series named V-9202. We can simulate the effects of putting an automatic block in the layout without actually having to build one by just using a very simple circuit. What this uh, figure here depicts is again our, our section of track, our rails, with the uh, on-off block. Direction of travel from left to right is shown by the green arrow. Uh, this would be main trackage here and this would be main trackage here. Again, no slowdown section. You can't really simulate a slowdown a section very easily, but we can simulate, simulate a simple on-off section. Uh, basically, all we do is bring a wire from the main line part here in front uh, back, and then a second wire that feeds from there to the block. And you could have either a simple switch here, or if you don't have a switch, you could just touch these wires together by hand. This is, depicts a hand here, but this is going to be hand-operated. What we're going to do is simulate the effects of a block uh, by just using our hand to manually connect and disconnect this thing at the appropriate spots. Uh, basically, if you recall from the magnetic block demonstration, the uh, block would go to red when a train crossed uh, the exit of the block, that is to say when it left the block and traveled over track contact T1, which was located right at the end of the block, it would set the block to the red state. Then when it traveled some point down the track further, uh, it would encounter track contact T2 and set the block to green. So when it went past one point on the track, it set the block to red, opening this, uh, essentially opening this circuit so the, this uh, on-off section went dead. Then when it went further down the track, it would again set the block to green, which would turn this section back on. So we can just simulate the effect of when it goes past the imaginary uh, track contact T1, we can turn this power on by closing this switch. When it goes over the, uh, excuse me, when, we, when it goes over the imaginary contact T1, we can uh, open the switch to simulate the, the way the block opens, opens this circuit. Then when it goes downstream and uh, passes over imaginary track contact T2, we can close this switch to simulate the way the block uh, turns that power in that section back on. Here's the actual uh, physical hookup for that diagram we were looking at a minute ago. Uh, the block is in the same place as before. This is the front of the block created by the, uh, a 1015U with a gap in the right rail. And it's the same length of the block, uh, 30 inches of actual on-off section that we were using uh, previously with the other blocks. The uh, gap extends back here, back to that rear 1015U. So this is the block from starting here that back 1015U coming forward to this uh, 1015U. The actual, the actual wiring of this thing, uh, again as per that diagram, we pick up uh, power from the front rail in front of the block, bring it in on this wire, here's our switch, and we deliver this power back to the to the uh, 1015U which puts it on this right rail that makes up the block. So. When the knife switch is open, as it's shown now, this rail is getting no power. If the uh, knife switch is closed like this, that rail will get power. So this effectively is a green state for the block, and this is effectively the red state for the block. Here's a piece of uh, red cardboard, which indicates where the imaginary track contact T1 would be that would uh, set the block to red, which would cut the power off to this on-off section. And uh, over in the far corner, over here, uh, is a piece of green paper that is a, a reminder of the imaginary 
now it's imaginary contact T2 that would turn the block on. So basically what I'm going to do, uh, whenever a train goes past here, the uh, red point, I'm going to open the knife switch to put the block to the red state and turn that rail off. Uh, when the train then travels on around uh, and comes past this point where the green paper is, I'm going to uh, close the knife switch to put the, our imaginary block in the green state and turn this rail on. So the block is now red, the set it to green. And this train goes through, we'll open the switch and set it to red. That train stops. Now we'll set it to green and closing the switch, set it to red. I'm just simulating with my hand the same thing the uh, magnetic controls would do. Now it's green. Now it's red that engine went through. Now it's green. Now it's red. Now it's green. Now it's red. Because whenever an engine goes through it turns it off, that's why I set it to red. Now it's green. Now it's 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 red. Now in the uh, preceding simulation, I had uh, installed a a pair of 1015U isolating tracks to make the block that I was turning on and off uh, manually using the knife switch. Now, if you have a situation where it would be a big disturbance to a layout to, to put that block in, uh, say an outdoor layout where you didn't want to tear up some ballasted track, you could do an even more basic simulation and not disturb your track at all. Uh, if, if you notice in here now, this, this track is, there's no 1015Us in here at all. It's just plain track. I removed the 1015 U's. Uh, how I'll simulate the block now, uh, since I cannot stop it electrically, I have no block and I have no knife switch, but I'll just physically hold the trains back to simulate the effect of a block stopping them. And in the same manner as before, when the train goes past this red marker, uh, we'll assume the block turns off and we'll hold a, we'll hold a, a train following it until the train that passes goes around and goes past the green marker, at which point we'll let the following train go. In other words, again, we'll simulate the operation of the magnetic system just by using our hands to stop and start the train. The only trick is to hold the train back without uh, derailing it, which sometimes happens, but we'll give it a try. The block is now effectively red until that engine crosses the green cardboard. So now the block is green. Now the block is red again from that train going through it. Now the block is green. Now the block is red from that engine passing through it. And the block is green. Now the block is red again. Now the block is green. Now the block is red again. Now the block is green. Now the block is red again. Now the block is green. Now the block is red. 
Now the block is green. Now the block is red. Now the block is green. Now the block is red. So this is essentially how the magnetic block can be simulated. Uh, you could also simulate the opti optical block uh, essentially by using a stopwatch. It'd be a little more trickier than doing this simulation. I'm, probably not, I'm not going to do it, but uh, make, make a mental note. You could simulate the optical block by uh, using a time delay. You could do it both with the on-off uh, knife switch and the, uh, the uh, block section of track by simply controlling the knife switch and watching a stopwatch at the same time to, to simulate a time delay of some amount, say five seconds or ten seconds, whatever the eye would be uh, set to. And uh, you could do it this brute force way that I just finished doing for the eye also, again using a stopwatch and just basically holding the trains back for a set amount of time whenever they pass the, the red point, which would normally trip, trip the electric eye if it was there.